Hey everyone, it's Mithril and welcome back to my journey of learning to draw. So today I'm going to update you guys on the practice schedule that Vol and CK has told me to follow. And now that I think about it, I haven't really been following it all too closely, but just to refresh everyone, I'm going to explain what it was. So first, I have How to Draw by Scott Robertson. I'm supposed to read this for 5 to 30 minutes a day. Then I'm supposed to go look at pictures and try to place myself, like think about whether I'm looking up or down, think about how all the objects are affected by perspective, and also just look at things and see how they're affected by perspective in my normal life. Second thing I'm supposed to do is read Steve Houston's Figure Drawing for Artists and then do a bunch of quick sketches of various body parts just to train my eyes and train my ability to perceive form. So if we took a look at the progress I've made, so this is the front of the book and this is how far I'm in. So I'm a bit over halfway through Scott Robertson's How to Draw. And if we take a look at the Steve Houston book, this is the front. I'm also a little over halfway through this book. And to be honest, I'm kind of surprised at how slowly I'm going. I think it's just because I really don't like reading. <laughs> like, I don't like reading as much as actually getting to draw. I've been spending about a quarter of my practice time like reading the two books collectively and the rest of the time drawing. It's not like I really plan it that way, it's just when I start drawing I get really excited and into it, so I stay up way too late, but I feel like that's not the worst problem in the world to have. So if we look into the numbers, I started doing the practice routine on January 8th, and today is January 30th. Um, between then and now, I've practiced for about 35 hours, it seems, and so that comes out to a daily average of one and a half hours of practice, which is really good, that's a lot of practice and it's more than I've been getting. Unfortunately, that is skewed because I was practicing a lot for about the first week after I got this practice routine. So yeah, I was going for like two, two and a half hours a day, but then I started panicking about my actuarial test, which I really should have been panicking about like way back in December, but I'm panicking about it now. So every day after I come home from work, I study for my actuarial test for about an hour to an hour and a half and I use whatever time I have left over at the end of the day to do art because right now in my life, it's not the most important thing. Like studying for this exam and making sure I only have to pay the $350 exam fee once, that's important to me. And so that just, you know, leaves less time for drawing. And that doesn't mean that it's not important to me. It's just, you know, we all have lives and we all have priorities. And I think I'm trying you know, my best to really balance everything that I'm doing. So I've only gotten about 40 hours of art practice time. And I think that contributes to why I haven't gotten through the books perhaps as fast as I thought I might, because some days I'm just skipping everything else and just drawing. And I don't think that's the worst thing to do right now, just maintaining my skills and just having fun because I'm doing like this really mentally intensive math for like an hour to an hour and a half a day and sometimes I just want to sit down and relax and do art and I feel like if I force myself to keep reading and doing stuff that I don't necessarily enjoy about it then I'll burn out a lot faster and I think consistency and making it part of my daily routine is the most important thing right now. Yeah, in this whole time ever since I started I been doing art at least for a few minutes every single day and I think that's a huge development in my personal growth. Although I think about two weeks ago, I just stopped doing my Pinterest practice. I don't really know why. I just like felt really bored doing it, so I stopped. But maybe I should pick that up again. But I don't know if I'll really take this super intense and seriously until after I take my exams and I can be free from that. And also there's been some like current events lately that have been stressing me out so much. So that's been taking away time from everything because I'm so focused on these news events and stuff that I haven't had, that it's like honestly just taking hours out of my day that I'm not using to study for my exams or study my art. Uh, hopefully that passes soon and my brain power can resume going to these activities that I want to improve. As I've been reading the Steve Houston book, I think it's like a very interesting uh, layout 
It talks a lot about gesture, but there's not very much stuff that's applicable or very actionable until halfway through the book. So it starts with talking about the gesture of the head, and it gives you like basically tips for how to indicate the gesture of the head. And then it moves on to the torso, the upper torso, then the lower torso, and then down into the tops of the legs and stuff like that. And as I've been going through this part, I've been trying to pay attention to it in my practice. Like when he first started talking about heads, I immediately went to my reference pictures and tried to draw a bunch of heads using the way that he said to do it. And then we moved on to the torso. I tried to do lots of torsos that day. I think that's been a pretty good system for me so far, but who knows? And I'm excited to see like what the next step is because it seems like his thing is that you first do the gesture and then you do the form within the gesture. Like, oh what, it's gesture structure, gesture structure. So I think I'm almost through the gesture and then we're gonna move on to the structure. And I'm pretty excited about that. So as I've gotten through like this much of the book so far, I felt like it might be fun to read out some passages that I think are interesting. When I was reading through one of the earlier parts of the book, here he's talking about like multiplying boxes and rectangles, basically extending shapes of the same size in perspective. I felt like that was really cool. And it utilizes some principles that I can definitely feel will come up later on. And for these earlier exercises, I actually followed along, I did it a bit, but they took a really, really long time compared to how much progress I was making. And I wasn't sure how much I should be focused on actually doing the exercises and just trying to read it and understand it. But I feel like I don't really understand it until I try it. But if I tried every single exercise as they came up, it would take so long to get through this book. So I'm really not sure exactly what I should be doing. Also in parts of the book like this, when we're constructing grids and he talks about using like specific angles and stuff, I wasn't really sure how to get those angles. Like I was just sitting here on the iPad like, what do I do? I don't have a protractor just handy. So I took a picture of a protractor off Google images and I put it behind like the layer to use it as a protractor. But doing that made it take so long to draw a single line. So I don't know, like I feel like I can see why people are really impatient when they're trying to get through this book because everything is so carefully measured and it takes forever to get something down on the paper. I, I guess I only have faith to go on that it'll actually work because I can definitely see why people are like, I don't know why I'm doing this. Like everything in the book is cars and planes. This isn't a subject matter that I'm particularly interested in. Clearly Scott Robertson is super into this stuff, but I'm not. So I get it. I have that feeling where I'm like, man, this isn't stuff that I'm really into. What am I doing here? But I also get, you know, like on an intellectual level and through faith, I understand that this stuff is important. and. If I want to be able to draw well anywhere else, that I have to go along with him. It feels like a catch-22, like, you know, maybe I would try hard if you prove that it would work. Well, like, you're not gonna get that proof until you actually apply it and try hard. I don't know, do you get what I'm trying to say? What I'm trying to say is I get it, but I also believe. <laughs> and then starting around here, chapter five, ellipses and rotations. He says stuff like, drawing ellipses is the basis for hinging flaps, rotating objects, and constructing spiral staircases. But best of all, drawing ellipses helps to generate excellent perspective grids based on perfect squares multiplied in any direction. The ability to place a freehand sketched ellipse on any minor axis is the primary skill needed before moving on to this chapter. So then I'm reading through this and I'm like, okay, I can't do that yet. So what do I do? Does that mean I don't read the chapter yet? Does that mean I read through and not understand how to do anything? And like starting from here, everything started to get really dense and hard to understand. And there were so many words and I just didn't wanna read it. And so like reading it is really mentally tiring. And I'm really impressed by people who can get through this. I don't know, like my brain feels exhausted trying to read all these words and understand them. And yeah, props to everyone who has really closely studied this and gotten through it. So uh, basically what I chose to do is um, follow Volan's advice and just read it, 
not necessarily do it yet, but I really want like the overview of everything that I'm going to get to and all the skills that I need in order to get there. Because what if I didn't get to this chapter yet? And in the first chapter, he told us how to practice ellipses and I'm like, oh, that doesn't sound like something I'll ever need to use. And so then I ignore it. Well, now I see, wow, ellipses are actually kind of important. So maybe I should reserve a spot in my practice routine to do them better because I'll need it for these hinging flaps. And what if I want to draw a really nice spiral staircase and I can't, my mechanical skills aren't good enough. And I think that's the upside of looking ahead so you know where you're going so you have like you keep the dream alive you're like man like that's where i'm going like that's the dream and so then you can push yourself through every day of practice and you also know which skills might be important to develop now so you have them later also i love how in this part of the book he has a shortcut for a five spoke wheel construction and also a tank tread subdivision cheat i think this just really shows like the subject matter that he's interested in. And so finally here I'm at chapter six and it's called Working with Volume. If you are most interested in drawing difficult symmetrical forms accurately in perspective, then this is the key chapter to study in this book. This chapter will break down and explain all of the most used and helpful construction techniques we know of to increase knowledge page by page until at the end of this chapter, almost any form can be accurately drawn in perspective. We have observed with our students over the years that by tackling one facet of volume building at a time and only moving on to the next level of complexity after each previous lesson was mastered, their understanding of form building from their imaginations was greatly improved. All of the knowledge gained so far in this book will be used, so if earlier steps were skipped, this chapter may quickly become frustrating. Don't despair and throw this book across the room. Take a deep breath, pause, turn back to the section where more study is needed and review it again. Having gained insight of how important the early basic exercises are to success in this chapter. So that sounds pretty spooky because having read through all the earlier chapters, that stuff looks really hard. And I only tried out some of the most basic early exercises and those were already really mentally taxing. So I'm a bit nervous after reading through this once, reading through it again and actually closely studying the exercises and mastering them. Like I know I know it's like vegetables and they'll help me out in the long run, but I'm just scared. <laughs> And honestly, I haven't really been reading this chapter all that well because it's just really confusing and it's hard to keep focused on it when I don't really understand what's going on. So I've just been trying my best to understand the diagrams and look at the pictures and hopefully whenever I come through it the next time, I'll have more fundamental knowledge in order to understand things properly. So that's an overview of my experience of how to draw so far. Uh, basically he says that you're gonna be frustrated and scared and just to go back and practice some more, which you know is probably sound advice, but it's not the advice that people wanna hear, you know? You just want it to be like, oh, you're having trouble? Try this one quick tip and everything will be solved. And I would like that too. So if anyone has that one quick tip, like hit me up, DM me. <laughs> okay, so let's move on to what I've been thinking of figure drawing for artists so far. So I feel like I've been really enjoying this book so far. Like Steve Houston writes in a really friendly and encouraging way. And I like how at the end of every chapter, there's a sort of like old master study and exercises to do. I think that's one of the most confusing parts about reading books to me, like reading art books, is that they give you a bunch of information, but not really a good way to apply it or test if you understand what's going on or anything. And so like having these exercises, it really helps me know like what to do. I don't know, like a more experienced artist, of course, would know exactly how to apply the knowledge that they're gaining from something like this. But as someone who doesn't know what I'm doing, it's really helpful to be told stuff. I like getting homework, <laughs> so I know what to do. So here in chapter three, we talk a little bit more about gesture. It says, design of life. Gesture's greatest gift is to show on a fundamental level how to move gracefully and dynamically from the head to the neck, from the rib cage to the hips, all the way through the body. 
Gesture is what makes the separate parts one whole. In other words, gesture composes. Ideally, a painter doesn't paint seven peaches and an apple. She paints one still life. A writer doesn't write seven chapters into 64 separate scenes. He writes one story. Mozart sounds like Mozart only when notes and instruments are orchestrated together. Any artist who just focuses on the pieces ends up with pieced together results. Art's job is to orchestrate life into something powerful, affecting and meaningful, something greater than the individual parts. Art challenges, harmonizes, or dramatizes. It can be cathartic, it can be infuriating, but it's always, always composed. One song, one story, one dance, one meal, one figure. Gesture is the chef's secret sauce. Gesture is the design of life. I'm wondering what Volan's thought process is with assigning me to draw separate parts of the body rather than connecting them together. Because throughout this book, it's made very clear that like you shouldn't draw body parts in isolation. The important part is having like one gestural flow through them and making sure that everything feels connected as one form. And as I've been reading through the book, I've been applying that stuff more such as whenever I draw like the upper torso of the body, I try to include parts of the shoulders and the upper arms. Or if I'm drawing the lower torso, then I'll include the upper legs. And sometimes I'll do the head and the neck as well. But honestly, I am really, really confused by the connection here between the torso and the neck and the shoulders. I've been trying so hard to study that part, but like, I just don't get it at all. Like the whole torso, I feel like I can draw that pretty nicely. The torso into the legs is like one of my favorite parts to draw right now because it can be just so graceful and beautiful. And I really want to be able to like, you know, connect the shoulders and the neck. It's just really confusing and I don't get it. And I feel like there's not very many landmarks. Like, you know, as you move up from the waist, I feel like I could just keep going on forever. It's hard to tell where, where do you stop and put the neck in? Where do you stop and put the shoulders in? I don't know if any of that made sense, but that's how I've been feeling so far drawing the figure. So then he talks a bit about things like perspective and the pencil test and whether you're looking at something from below or above and how that affects the form and how you should draw it. Then the next chapter is about light and how that works whenever it reflects off of things. And I totally forgot that that was even in the book because the next section is uh, breaking down the human body and I've been focusing all on that. Yeah, I forgot that this part was even part of the book. So I think that goes to show how much I've been applying the stuff in the earlier chapters. I'm just really lost about that. I'm not really sure what to do and I think that's fine. I just have to, you know, build up the fundamentals, the gesture, and the structure. You know, I need to get that structure down before I can really get the lighting down and the perspective. You know, like, it's cyclical, it builds. You know, as I understand things, I can learn the earlier material better. And I, I'm not too worried now that I know a little bit more about learning. I mean, it's all just a process. I'm not missing out on anything. I'm just working on what I'm working on right now, so whatever. <laughs> Right, so in the first part, it talks about simplifying the gesture and structure of first the head and then the torso, the lower torso into the lower legs, the shoulders and the arms, the hands and the feet, just showing you how to draw the gesture and really get the gesture down first. And then chapter seven is all about the head. And I don't know, I feel like all of it has gone by really fast and I don't really have as much information as I wish I had. So I'm reading through it and I'm like, oh yeah, this is very interesting. And then I'll get out my iPad and then get out a reference picture and I'll be staring at it. I'm like, okay, so now that thing looks different from the thing in the book and I don't know what to do anymore. And I'll try my best, but I feel like I'm still missing a lot of skills. Like sometimes, you know, I'll draw, I want to draw a line and I can't draw as accurately as I want to. And I guess that's probably why Volan told me to work on like a body part at a time because he sees that my technical skills aren't really where they need to be. Like my actual observation and um, my ability to uh, create clean lines. I don't know what happened. Like at a certain point, I just started getting scratchier and scratchier with my strokes. 
that's definitely a problem and something I need to focus on. So he talks about how there's a lot of gesture even within the head. Like in this diagram, he says that all the red lines are various gestures that go through the head. I have no idea how to apply that. I can barely draw a head as it is. And I'm really tempted to go back and reread all the stuff about the various parts of the body every time I, you know, pick up the pencil and get practicing. And I do sometimes, like, if I get to the leg, I'm like, oh, let's go back and look at what he said about the leg and stuff. But I do need to, you know, eventually finish this and then start again so I can actually, like, you know, pick up more knowledge that I missed along the way. Also, here's an important bit I want to share with you guys who are worried about proportion. A word about the challenge of proportions. The looking, the measuring, the measuring, the looking. Well, I saved that until the end of the chapter. Measuring is the last thing we need to worry about while jumping headfirst into the complexities of the human body. For now, just observe and draw. Do your best with the information at hand. Part of our goal here is to build good instincts so the art comes naturally. Here's a suggestion as you read. Stop, stop and sketch a few of the instructional drawings after each section to test these new ideas. It is only by drawing that you will soak up the material in a lasting way. If you want to go the extra mile, after each new section, go back and review some of your drawings from earlier sections to see how you did and celebrate your progress and improvement. So I think this goes back to the concept of how you can only work on one thing at a time. Okay, everyone? You can only work on one thing at a time. So don't worry so much about everything. And I know that will mean different things and look differently to different people. But I remember when I first started doing like gesture drawings, I was frustrated about everything. I'm like, oh man, my line quality? terrible. My proportions? Terrible. It doesn't look like a person. And I had no vision of what it was that I was trying to improve. Like at the beginning, my goal should have just been, does this curve resemble the curve that I see in the body? And not cared about the proportion and not cared about my line quality and all that. Because if I don't have a goal, how do I know if I've reached it? And how do I know if I'm getting better? And I feel like I've definitely tried to internalize that a lot. I'm thinking, what is my goal for today? Today, I want to convey the volume of this particular muscle. And then I will draw it and draw it until I feel like I can feel that muscle through the page. I'm like, okay, good. Uh, the proportions are a bit off, like the flow's a bit off, whatever. The next one, I want to match this curve. So now I'll draw it until I match the curve. And I think it's definitely helped because now I see like, yeah, this one is better than this one in this one aspect. And I feel like that's really helped my morale. I'm like, yay, I'm winning. I'm winning at art and it's fun. So if that made any sense, <laughs> those are my thoughts on that. So I think that's all I have to say for now. I will keep doing these practices for a while until I at least finish the books once. After that, I think I might contact Volan for another session and ask him about what he thinks about my progress, what he thinks I should do next, when will I be ready for studying from New Masters Academy, but I don't think that'll be for a while. My actuary test is in March, so I don't think I'm going to start anything intensive or new in terms of my art studying and practicing until after all that is over. And if I don't pass, then I will be very upset and it'll just be three more months of not doing as much art as I want. I'm very highly motivated to just take this dang test one time, pass it, get a good job and whatever else. Also, I am very excited for February. As I'm recording this, February has not started yet, but when this comes out, we may be well into February. I'm still deciding on what kinds of videos I may or may not make, but um, good luck to everyone, and I hope you are doing well during the challenge. It's hard for me to tell if I've improved at all over the past few weeks. I am pleased with some of the stuff I've made. Some days are better than others, 
but throughout the video I've been playing my practice in chronological order so if you feel like you can see an improvement then wonderful if you can't then I'm probably still improving you know because I am doing deliberate practice and I've been doing it regularly <laughs> If you want to see my art practice updates daily, check out my Instagram since I'm posting my practice every single day. I hope that you all have a wonderful and productive day. Now, get back to work.